Hi, good afternoon. Now we're in New York, both of us in New York. My name is Giovanna, and the host of Arbit, and we have a uh, Jimmy Liotta. I I went to uh, I went to uh, the Armory show, and I saw uh, Jimmy's uh, art, and I feel like wow, this project is so interesting. Uh, I want to do some interview. And the following week, I went to the the gallery, a microscope gallery in Chelsea. So this show still is a, like an ongoing show. Uh, if anybody want to see it, they still can see. The, the name of the show is uh, called the uh, the word is a picture of the world. Jeanette, uh, Jeanette, uh, can you introduce yourself uh, right now? Um, um, talk about like your your background a little bit. Yeah, hi. Um, thanks for having me on the podcast. It's fun to be here on a rainy day in New York on Sunday when the gallery is closed. <laughs> um, yeah, my name is Jeannie Leota, and I've been making films, videos, projection performances. I sometimes work in paper. I work in a lot of different mediums over the years. Um, even I tried being a musician for a little while when I was young. And, I've, and this was something when I was a young person going to college at NYU, living in the downtown of New York, it was very common for artists and musicians of all kinds to like work together and collaborate and make a lot of different kind of projects together very quickly and easily. So it's normal to have a theater person playing the guitar and a drummer making films. Everybody was mixing it up and poetry too. So that was a very big influence to me as a young person to think that you didn't only have to make one kind of art. So I like to say now that I'm promiscuous with media. I work across all, many different kinds of media. Um, it's a little joke, right? Promiscuous is pretty sexy, but it, it's, a, it's a sexy experience, right? To make a lot of move around through different materials because every material has its own story to tell. And sometimes one material is perfect to use to explore an idea, and sometimes another one is better. So in this regard, I've made many films in 16 millimeter and Super 8. I made video. Um, my last show with Microscope Gallery, which was in Bushwick at the time, I made with um, iPhones and sit remotely sending the iPhone uh, images down into the gallery for a video installation. But no matter which kind of medium I've been using, very often I'm trying to explore the cosmos. This has been a subject that has been really strong for me for many years. In fact, my very first film when I was, I don't know, 20 something <laughs> was called Blue Moon. And it was a very personal movie that I made, you know, with myself, but it was all between me and the moon, a relationship between a young woman and the moon. So I, I didn't realize maybe when I was making this film that I was setting off on a course that I remain on to this day, um, still exploring the cosmos in many different ways. So now with my show that you introduced, the world is a picture of the world, I have a program, an exhibition up at Microscope Gallery, and the focus of it is again the cosmos, but this time it's through slides, 35 millimeter slides. And there's a carousel, which is the um, looping mechanism for the slide projector. And we have 80 slides in there and they're just constantly going around forever you know, or until electricity burns out. <laughs> um, with slides and then there's two, one, two, three uh, installations that have slides projected onto drawings. And then there's another suite of some photograms that I'm making with um, photograms or photographs that you make with no camera, just working in the dark room directly. So I'm really using photography very much as a, as a lens, <laughs> that's a pun, a lens through which to think about the cosmos. And using these slides, which are historical NASA slides, right? I, they're not slides that I took myself. They're um, public material that's 
material that's made public by NASA because um, it's important to think that everything that NASA produces and with images and information, they publish and make public because it's all funded through tax monies and it belongs to the American people. Um, yeah, so I'm using these public materials of the NASA images. Most of those images are older, obviously, because they're on slides, picture of the world and the um, 35 millimeter NASA slides. And these slides are um, were made for consumers, for families at home, for schools and teachers to use and um you know, show slides in the classroom, or I don't know if you had some children that were interested in space, you could show them at home. It was really made for everyday people. And they were sold very often in like gift shops of, of planetarium or a science museum or something like this. Um, mostly the slides were taken from NASA missions from the 70s and 80s for the most part, maybe something in the early 90s. Um, and I found them on eBay. And the reason that I even looked for them in the first place was that I was given one slide by a friend. And it was a single slide that was very beautiful of the universe. They gave it to me as a gift because they knew of my deep interest in the cosmos and thinking about time and space. And I always had this in my studio. And it was a tiny slide that had some printed um, information on the bottom, like right on the slide, um, you know, the Hubble deep space universe or something. So I, I became curious about that and I would Google it and I found that this slide came from a set that you could buy. And I found one of these sets being sold for collectors on eBay. So I purchased it. Not very expensive, you know, just an inexpensive um, collector's item, I suppose. And I put the, I had the one slide in my window because, you know, the beautiful thing about slides and real film, unlike videotape or, you know, our screens that we look at, is that it's actually a material that light shines through, right? It's like a stained glass window, like having a tiny stained glass window. Mm -hmm. And it's very enjoyable. Sometimes people themselves will make craft projects at home using old negative strips, anything that light passes through. And I put this slide in my window so I could enjoy it as a little piece of stained glass. And slowly over the course of a month or two, I began to notice that the slide was fading. Nice. This deep, deep, dark sky with stars in it was slowly becoming uh, greener over time and it was a beautiful color. It was so fascinating. And I realized, of course, as you know, someone who works with photography, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, putting this slide in the window and the sun is bleaching it out. It's taking, the, it's taking the color away and revealing a new color underneath, right? Because in a photographic material, you have layers that are of the emulsion on top of the base. So they're different layers of color. And this was revealing a different color. And I just thought this was a beautiful process. I was thinking, oh, of course we need the sun in order to see, in order to, you know, the word photography itself is, is about light writing. So in the first place, the original slide is made with the help of our star, the sun. And now I'm putting the slide in the window and the sun's taking some of the light back. This was seemed very poetic to me as a gesture to give something back to the sun. <laughs> and then I began a little factory at home getting these slides from eBay and very, very, um, with great intent and taping all the slides in the window so that the sun had many, many slides to take from. <laughs> and over probably the course of two years, I, every time I would buy a new batch of slides, I would put them in the window and in a way I was curing them or allowing this process to happen. So that's how the um, very distinct green color that you see in many of the slides mm -hmm manifested through this, this um, long process, this conversation, if you will, that I was having with the sun. 
This is why artists always can find something um, it, it, that people they won't notice. <laughs> well, they notice the color. They just don't know, you know, how or why. But the color is very strong, and it's the first thing people say when they look at the slides. It's like, what is that green? Because we are so used to looking, thinking about space. You know, there's no light. There's only stars, and everything else is black. Or they think about the sky and the atmosphere and you know colors that we can see from the earth, the blue sky, for example. But what was this green? It looked like some very intense pond water or some ocean color almost. And I like that um, association to water and thinking too about the time and history, like in the 19th century. When before we could go out into space, we only could see through telescopes. But people were were doing a lot of、um, literature, for example, around the sea. The sea was the place of mystery, that unfathomable depth that we could only reach so far, where creatures lived, but we couldn't see them. You know, so space is still very much like this. We we've hardly seen anything. We try, and when we go. A distance with our spaceships to look around and take data. We're also moving. We're moving in space, and we're moving in time as the universe expands. It's it's fascinating to me. So yeah, I think people see that green, but don't know what the green is.、Um, and that was my first step in this whole process of working with the slides was this relationship with the sun. And this、um, color process that we were undergoing together, myself and the sun. <laughs> yeah, that's I, yeah. I really enjoy this、uh, story. That how do you, how do you、uh, discover <laughs> this <laughs> this a、uh, new color、um, yeah. that from the sun and invented something yourself?、Um, yeah, and it, it it brings once the color changed. It made me think differently about this image of the cosmos. This picture was now changed by the way I was I was working with it, and I was holding a historical image, and now it became an image very much of the present, right? Because this this color was the result of of my own process, and I started thinking now differently about the cosmos. Like, well, you know, we can. We can contribute as individuals, as artists. We can contribute to these images, as I think about what the cosmos might look like or could look like. Very often, we read the news about the new theories of science, you know, and regular people don't know everything about science, but we like. We're many people are curious and want to read about these scientific theories, and it's not.、Um, It's not physical, you know. Very often, when we read about it, these are these are theoretical ideas. And in order to think better about science, we have image making. I mean, diagrams have certainly served that purpose in science for a long time. And the popular imagination is a big part of how we are continuously curious. You know, when we see these images, even as children, we're so fascinated. So I was very interested in starting from this, what I like to call the official image, the official image that NASA produces, that we all circulate and we all see the same image. But we can also add our imagination to these images, the way we think about the theories, the way we have have thoughts and feelings and、um, you know imagination about this space that we live in. And I started to intervene. Into that official image by making collage. So first I intervened with the color, and then I started adding things. I'm like, well, you know, the, I read about the bubble theory of the universe, and I'm like, what if there were bubbles? Or I put some circular, spherical, transparent、um, spheres onto the slides, and then I could project that as though I'm thinking about the bubbles. So in some ways, they're pictures of thought, and they're pictures of what I make with my hand and what I might imagine. And I think that it increases, in a way, the imagination of the cosmos altogether.、Um, I, I also noticed that there's some uh, uh, different color, like 
gels. That's right. Oh, gels. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a lot. You 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 collage with these uh, uh, slides. Uh, that also make like different. Um, I saw, yes. I found the all these uh, slide also. Uh, there's uh, some uh, some artwork that the uh, displayed in the gallery. Yes, um, I used gels or you know they're they're lighting filters that are used in photography so that light can pass through them and and change the um, you know the mood let's say of a photograph professional photographers use them cinematographers we change the quality of lighting by using these lighting filters and sometimes also with um performing, because I do perform live with my projectors sometimes, you can introduce these filters in front of the lens and also change color. So it's it's a beautiful tool, these lighting filter gels, and they come in all many colors, you get different palettes of color, and the light passes through beautifully. It's just a very um, kind of a pure color effect with a very emotional relationship, I would say. Colors really affect us. They're, they're high affect. We feel differently when we look at red light than when we look at blue light, green light. And I wanted to utilize the color for these effects, you know, for their emotional feeling or how I'm feeling when I'm looking at it. And I introduced the gels as collage material onto the slides and I paste them or tape them or use different adhesive methods to introduce more transparent vision. Sometimes I use stickers. And I worked very, very um, intensely with the colored gels and they found their way not only into the slides, but as you mentioned, the other artworks, which were the photograms. Um, there are three, body, three, three kinds of works in this show. There's the carousel of slides that have all the 80 different collage elements. Then there's two installations that are slide projections onto drawings. And those drawings are rubbings, actually. They're very direct um, frottage method where I'm using the carousel from the slide projector and graphite, and I'm making a, kind of like a, a cosmic, uh, you know, cosmic <laughs> image mm. drawing, but I don't draw it freehand. I only use the slide carousel to make the different circles and spheres and something that might look like a NASA image in a way. So I tried to only use material and um, produce artworks using the slide projector and the parts of the slide projector, really thinking about what does it mean to make a picture of the world and how we experience the world through pictures very often. That is how we gain our knowledge. So there I was making drawings and rubbings with the slide carousel and for the photograms, which is the next body of work, I brought the slide carousel into the chemical dark room and exposed it directly onto the paper in, in different shapes. So all of those images that you see with the photograms are made only by using the slide carousel. And then I took the Afterwards, after I dried the photos and had this, this uh, set of photograms, I took the gels and some of the spheres I had cut to use in the tiny slides, and I used that material on the photograms in order to have them bring out different, different qualities of color, sometimes humor, sometimes beauty, uh, different feeling states that the colors would bring us. And also that with the spheres that were cut out from the gels, we also can perhaps uh, approximate ideas about the earth and the sun and the moon and all these many different spheres which exist in the, in the cosmic realm. Yeah, that's the really cool project and the, um, because I, I, I like, I like all these ideas, the, um, the, uh, when you see the, the universe and the, the world inside these uh, pictures, um, mm -hmm. and how uh, and some of the, the, the 
the the photos and they are like over exposure some of them that they, they use it. they have a different color like a natural uh, color under exposure um i i feel like oh this is a, something really different <laughs> um, yeah thank you <laughs> it's not the usual way, and it's important i think to um i mean in science we we see these images i mean like for example right now we're seeming to be at, at a very environmental moment where people are so concerned on the climate change and we're passing these different images around. We're seeing pictures of the Arctic Circle and the ice is melting. And, you know, we're, we use these images that are also produced by, by scientists in order to think about what's happening, right? And people get used to looking at the same images all the time. They lose their wonder. They lose their curiosity. It's just the same picture again. It's another picture, you know? And the scientists are very aware of this. They're aware that in order to keep people's interest and curiosity, that the, we need new images. Yeah, and uh, that's the uh, images from out of space. Um, and you can just uh, um, you utilize those images and uh, create some fantastic art. Um, yeah, yeah, I, and I want I want those historical images to be there as part of the work because it's about the history and it's it's like the past and there's the present and we're looking through both of them. You know, we don't only see one or the other; we see both. We see what I'm making and we see what NASA made at the same time. So hopefully, we can feel a continuation and a connection from that time till now. I think that helps us think about the future and that the very act of projection itself, putting a slide in the machine and turning on the light and projecting is a way of projecting into the future. The future is only sometimes a few feet away. <laughs> so this is uh, why we need art and artists uh, is uh, somehow you keep it can become the, the legacy and uh, something that people, they will remember um, the next generation. Um, they I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I run tech companies. Uh, I really like science myself. Yeah. Um, um, you know, I have, I worked on a project with some scientists from NOAA. Um, I worked on a project where I sat and spoke with some scientists about different ideas. And one of the scientists said something so interesting that I never forgot. She said, when scientists do their work, they have to focus very intently and they, it's almost like they have to have tunnel vision. They need to put on their blinders so they can like go very deep into a tiny specific subject. But they lift their head sometimes and they see artists and what artists are very good at, he said, was to bring us the dynamics of the environment and the world. That every single tiny specialty that every scientist is doing is actually in conversation with everyone else. And these all these systems affect each other. They are a dynamic system. And I love thinking about that. I said, you know, that's actually true and is actually what is exciting to me more than anything about touching in with these scientific images is like thinking about the dynamics of the world. Yeah, that's a really something, yeah, dynamic, That that is the word. It is. That's a good word, right? Yes. <laughs> um, are you uh, are you teaching in college right now? Uh, what did you teach right now? Yes, I'm. I'm teaching remotely from New York um, at at my um, job at the University of Colorado Boulder, and I'm teaching two classes at the moment right now. One of them is about film and spectatorship for young filmmakers and the other class is open to any people and it's um, looking at the films of Robert Bresson and thinking about some of his theories. And then in the springtime, I teach a, a grad seminar 
just for graduate students of all the different arts. And it, the subject changes. Um, last spring, I taught about art and film in the time of AIDS during the 80s and 90s. So, I'm, yeah, I teach many different subjects. I also teach a class called Projected Light, where we work specifically with projections in space. That's really fun class to do, and maybe with this with this show at microscope right now, you could see some of the techniques that I might be teaching them. <laughs> yeah, that that's really interesting because uh, the, when I was in Taiwan record company and especially mm-hmm. electronic music, so uh, uh, I work and collaborate with a lot of uh, uh, the. It, um, VJ, so this is they they work with a, a projector and uh, uh, make some videos uh, mm-hmm. with the, with the electronic music, and it is really a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it's very good for students to play with these apparatus instead of just thinking that there's only one right way to use a, a you know, any kind of tool. There's many ways and it's important for them to to practice those ways so they can get their own ideas, yeah? Yeah, that's a, that's a really uh, uh, really good course uh, that I'm glad that you you you, also, you have a uh, fun to teach too. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's a, is a, you, uh, the, there's the, there's a lot of uh, project that you can collaborate with uh, with uh, other artists. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Can you also uh, share your story that um the that you plan uh, about uh, the 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 art artistic life in Colorado and uh, any future plan for next year? Oh yeah. Well, when I um, finish with this project, I, I'm going to try to continue working on a film that I've, I've been working on in the background for a little while now that has also a lot of cosmic ideas inside. And I, I'd like to finish that film. And I, I also hope to go on a small tour uh, in Europe once it's okay to travel again. Many plans were um, canceled, you know, during the pandemic. So I hope to get back and tour around with, with some uh, projector performances that I make um, using various objects in front of projections and creating kind of a live show with objects. Uh, no, no images except for shadow and, and uh, light refraction. So that is some, another plan. And then my, my furthest plan for next fall is a, a project I want to make in Colorado when the aspen trees are, are turning. Like this would be the time right now in Colorado. The, they don't have the same, um, uh, you know, we have this amazing experience on the East Coast here in in North America with uh, the trees that change color and, you know, especially the maples and various trees that go into these like incredible reds and rubies and the whole beautiful hot colors before they die for the winter. But there's not so many of those kinds of trees in, in Colorado. They have the evergreen dark fir trees and they have the aspen, which is an amazing rhizome kind of a tree it's they are not individual trees they are all connected under the ground across many 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 miles one organism that that puts forth shoots that come up as these aspen trees and they're incredible neon yellow it's a really um amazing experience so i think you know it might not feel like project about aspen trees is about the cosmos, but I say that it is. (laughs) It is one of the ways that the dynamics of our world are experienced and trees are sentient beings and part of the cosmos as much as we are. So I hope to um, bring that project a little little more down to earth maybe and and think about what's under our feet, um, underneath the, the crust of the earth. Yeah, that sounds very uh, interesting and uh, looking forward. But in New York, you, you, you should definitely go to Microscope Gallery in Chelsea. 
uh, so the, the show is still uh, on view. And this is a really interesting project that I, I found it. <laughs> something somehow that, that I feel connected. <laughs> like I, uh, I, I love science and I, I love art and I like all these ideas and concepts. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I, I should have mentioned also that the uh, slide carousel piece is called My Mind of Universes Erupting Continuously. So I wanted to really bring with that title a, a sense of this constant dynamics of the cosmos, both in actuality as, as new galaxies are made and, you know, it's an expanding universe where things change all the time, but also that our ideas about them change based on the images that we look at. Thank you so much. And this is a really great afternoon and uh, I really enjoy this uh, story you share. Uh, thank you, Giovanna. It's been a pleasure to be on Art Bit. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, bye-bye.